Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We praise Him, we seek His aid, His forgiveness. We seek refuge with Allah from the evils inside of us and from our evil actions. Whomsoever Allah guides, one can lead astray. And whomsoever Allah leads astray, one can guide. I testify that one has the right to be worshipped with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is one and he has no partners. And I testify that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his servant and final messenger to the whole of mankind. My respected brothers and sisters in Islam. Alhamdulillah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us the blessed day of Eid, a day of celebration and a day of enjoyment. But it's tinged with a hint of sadness that we leave the month of Ramadan, a month where all of our priorities, all of our focus was changed, where we were engaged in the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in fasting, in, 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 in salah, in Quran, in dua, etc. As we leave Ramadan today and going forward, we will find that our stomachs are full of food. In Ramadan, our stomachs were empty, but our hearts were full. Our hearts were full of Iman because we were doing the good deeds. And now as we leave Ramadan and the rest of the year, our stomachs will be full. But I ask myself and my brothers the question, what about the heart? What is more important, the heart or the stomach? Our Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, there is a morsel of flesh in the body. If it is pure, everything is pure. If it is corrupt, everything is corrupt. That morsel is the heart. The heart is the most important part in your body. So just as we feed our stomachs with food, we have to give the food to the heart as well. So this leads to the next question. What is the food of the heart? The food of the heart is recognizing and knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Having love of Allah, hope in Allah, fear of Allah's punishment. The food of the heart is reading the Quran. The food of the heart is making dua. The food of the heart is doing dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All of these things give life and sustenance to the heart. If you take these things away from the heart, the heart will die and the person will be destroyed. He will be miserable, he will be sad, there will be no blessings in his life and in the next life he will have a very difficult situation. Why? He did not feed his heart. All of these things, Quran, Dua, Dhikr, glorifying Allah, come together in what? As Salah. As Salah. All of these things come together in the prayer. Just as your food, you eat breakfast, lunch and dinner. Same way, Salah is five times a day. Salah is the core of feeding your heart. When you stop establishing your Salah, your heart is not being fed anymore. If you knew what it was like yesterday, when you were hungry, when you missed breakfast, lunch and dinner, you knew about the state of your stomach. When you were missing Salah, your heart is in a worse condition. Every time you sin, there is a black dot coming in your heart, till so your heart becomes all black and your heart is destroyed. So for the one who is not establishing his Salah, in accordance with the Quran and Sunnah, really he is going into a very difficult and dangerous position. So as we leave Ramadan, we need to ensure that we continue feeding our hearts with Iman, the core of which is Salah. We should not treat Ramadan like a room. We enter Ramadan at the beginning, the light of Iman comes on. And the day Ramadan finishes, everything back to normal again. We didn't learn anything from Ramadan. Our behavior is the same as just before Ramadan, when we leave Ramadan. Ramadan is supposed to improve us. It's supposed to get us to a higher level. Ramadan shows you this is your potential. You are able to do this. In the rest of the year, no way you'll be at this level. But no way you should drop back to the level before. You should be somewhere in the middle. Certainly you should be better than you were at the beginning of Ramadan. So continue with the spirit of Ramadan. We move on. Our religion, our health, our economic well-being, everything is influenced by the country that we live in. Everything. If a country introduces a law, for example, that they will build no more massaging, what would be the condition of our Islam? It would be challenged, it would be difficult. You go to Europe, some women, they cannot wear niqab. Today we did the Eid Salat University. If that was the case, those women, they would not have been allowed in the public building of university because they are wearing niqab. All of this is influenced by the country that we live in, the state that we live in. And when we look at our country now, 
There are some huge changes going on. We saw it with leaving the economic the European Union. We saw a huge impact on our lives. If you look across at America, there is a real possibility that Trump could be the next president of America, and we all know his attitude. We look at France, Le Pen, the National Front could be the next government. Imagine that scenario. You get a right-wing government here, Trump in America, right-wing in Europe. What would be the condition of our Islam? For sure it will be affected. For sure it will be challenged. And we need to understand this. And we need to be part of the conversation. We need to claim our rights. We need to speak up. Otherwise our future and the future of our children is being influenced and we've got our head in the sand. It's very dangerous. And where does this danger come from? It comes from democracy. When you have individuals that are charismatic and they play on insecurities of people around immigration and terror, the whole country can change direction overnight. Everything can change and all of our lives begin to change. And this is the nature of democracy. And these people, they say, democracy is the solution to the, all of the world's problems. This is what's put forward. The Muslim world, everyone needs to be democratic and this will solve the world's problems. They can't solve their own problems with democracy. The nation is going in a crisis situation and yet it's supposed to, supposed to serve, solve the world's problems? No way. So we ask ourselves the question, what is the alternative? Is there an Islamic alternative? And of course there is. The Islamic alternative, the Islamic model, is that what Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came with? Where everything, our spiritual Islam, our health, our economics, our governing system, the way it ruled, everything comes from the Quran and the Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It is implemented by the ruler. It is guided by the scholars of Islam. It is informed by the experts in their relevant fields. This is the model of Islam that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came with. And this is the model that spread throughout the Middle East, went through the Indian subcontinent, Pakistan, India, Bangladesh, over to the Far East, Malaysia, India, Indonesia, into Africa, up to the shores of Europe. This is the Islamic model that survived for centuries. It gave rights to minorities. Under it, education and invention and invention flourished under the Islamic model. This is the solution to the, the problems of mankind, the Quran and Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. How do we obtain this situation? How do we arrive at it? First of all, how do we not arrive at it? We don't arrive at it with these groups that are springing up all over the Muslim world and are creating anarchy and destruction and killing in every place and in every street. In the last week of Ramadan, 250 people killed in Baghdad in Iraq. 250 people. What were they doing? Just going shopping after their Ramadan, after their fasting. Going shopping for Eid. 50 people killed in Turkey. What were they doing? Maybe going to the airport catching a flight. 20 people killed in Bangladesh. What were they doing? Going to a bakery, eating food in the evening. SubhanAllah. Even the city of Medina is not safe from this anarchy anymore. Where 10,000 of the Sahaba are buried. When we talk about the governing system, this is the root of the governing system of Islam is in Medina. This is the city of the grave of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. That someone can come 200 yards away and plant a bomb and kill people in the city of Medina. When this happens, look at this destruction and the anarchy in the Muslim world. No one is safe anymore. Muslim, non-Muslim, young, old, black, white, no one is safe. When the people get to that level where they can bomb and kill in the city of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa This is not the way of Islam. This is not the way we establish the Quran and the Sunnah. Rather, People do not know why they are killing anymore. There is no justification. How can one justify this? It is like the hadith of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, where he said a time will come where a man will commit murder. He will kill and he will, he will, be, he will say, I don't know why I killed. He don't know why he killed somebody. And the one who is murdered and killed, he will not know for what reason he was murdered. Why was I killed? I was going shopping, I was going traveling, I was going... Why was I... The hadith of the Prophet said the man will not know why he was killed. 
Rasulullah was asked by the Sahaba, when will this happen? He said, when there is anarchy, when there is fitna, when there is chaos in the world. And these are the times we are entering, a time of fitna and a time of chaos. May Allah protect the Muslims and humanity. So when we turn back and we answer the question, how then do we establish this Islamic model of Quran and Sunnah? First and foremost is our tawheed and our knowledge that we turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that Allah's authority is unequivocal, it is absolute and it is ultimate. This is the authority of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is part of our tawheed. It is not just about praying and fasting. It is recognizing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in every level. We do not take our religion from the modernists who tell us the solution to the problems of the world or democracy. We do not take our Islam from these people. We do not take our Islam from the media that portrays us in such a negative light that we are this and that and confuses the mind of the youth and the simple people. We do not take our religion from these people. We take our religion from the Quran and Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has understood by his noble companions. This is the first way we return to knowledge. The second way, reason, every one of us has to establish our life upon the Quran and Sunnah. We have to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The mother has to raise her child according to Islam. The father has to look after his family. We have to go out and we have to give da'wah. We have to enjoy, we have to forbid the evil, enjoy the good, forbid the evil. We have to love for the sake of Allah and hate for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When every one of us does that and our communities come together, we will reach that position that we want. Either we are part of the solution or we are part of the problem. And many of us, we are part of the problem today. We are not part of the solution. We are not prepared to live our lives according to Islam. This is the reality. We pay lip service. We are not prepared to live our lives according to Islam. When Rasulullah and the Sahaba, they did this, they were prepared to sacrifice everything. This is the thing. They were prepared to give up everything of the dunya that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them the dunya as we describe. And this is, what can we sacrifice? Would we sacrifice our jobs for this religion? Would we sacrifice uh, our education for this religion if we had to? If it came to the crunch, would we do that? We know in our hearts the answer. I will give you one example in modern times of a person who was ready to sacrifice. And this man is Muhammad Ali Rahimullah, who passed away recently. He has a very checkered life. Look at one incident, one very beautiful and insightful incident in his life. You know, in the 1960s, racism against black people was rampant in America. They had to eat at the back of the restaurant, they had to sit at the back of the bus, they were really downtrodden people. And amongst them, one of the most powerful ones was Muhammad Ali. He was a boxing champion of the world. He had the world title. He had all the wealth and he had the dunya that you and I can't dream of. You, we can't dream of this. He had all of this dunya. The year is 1967. America is at war with Vietnam. When this happens, everyone from America, man, has to go and take part in the war. Has to go. And Muhammad Ali, he is one of them. He has to go and take part in the war with Vietnam. He refuses to go. He says, on the basis of my religious principles, I refuse to go to Vietnam. I refuse to fight these people. They have done nothing bad to me. Look, he's standing up to the whole of America here. What did they do to him? They strip him of his world title. This is something, he's a boy, he's a man from the ghetto, from the slums. He's worked his way up, blood and sweat and effort all these years for his world title. They take it from him. He doesn't care. They say to him, we're going to put you in prison. He doesn't care. They say to him, we're going to stop you from boxing for three years, from the age of 25 to 28. His best years as a boxer. This is best, the prime of his life. These are the years he can make millions as a boxer. He says, I don't care. He doesn't care about the dunya. And they strip all of this from him, subhanAllah. And he stays strong in the face of this adversity. What happens after this? Carry on the story three years later. SubhanAllah. He goes back and he wins his boxing championship again. 
Not only is he become the boxing champion of the world, some people say he is the best boxer ever. He's been the best boxer ever. He comes back better than before. He comes back richer than before. He gets all of his wealth back. But perhaps most importantly, the very people that hated him loved him. He became such a person, the likes of Nelson Mandela and Martin Luther, he came at that level. He became iconic. The people who hated him, they loved him for his strength. At his funeral, the leaders, the presidents of the world came to his funeral. Muslims and non-Muslims is a huge outpouring. Everyone loved this man. Why? Because he was prepared for the sake of his principles, for the sake of his religion to give up the dunya. What is the hadith of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? A man comes to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and says, Tell me an action, if I do it, Allah will love me and the people will love me. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Give up the dunya, Allah will love you. Give up what the people desire and the people will love you. He gave up what the people desired, the money, the, he gave it all up. The people loved him. He became one of the most best known figures in the entire world. He gave up the dunya, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala love him, grant him jannat al those along with all the deceased Muslims. So my respected brothers and sisters in Islam, we conclude the khutbah. The Ramadan has gone, but ibadah continues. Don't let your heart die today. Don't let your heart die. Don't come out of Ramadan and no Zohar, no Asr, no Maghrib, no Isha, tomorrow no Salah. You are destroying your heart. You are killing yourself. It's worse than no food. As we move forward, you should know that Islam provides a comprehensive solution to the whole of mankind. And that solution is the Quran and the Sunnah. It is not obtained by killing rampantly. It is not obtained in, by creating anarchy and chaos. Rather, it is obtained by me and you changing our lives according to the Quran and Sunnah and sacrificing for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Taqabbal Allah minna wa minkum, siyamuna wa qiyamuna wa Qur'anana wa du'a'una. Allahumma ikhfulina dhanubana wa kafrina sayyatina. Allahumma qina adab al-dunya wa adab al-akhir. Allahumma aqfil al-mu'minina al-mu'minat wa al-muslimina al-muslimat. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana. وفي الآخرة حسنا وكنا أضاف النار إيبوبا